Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Shrek Game Silicon video, we're going to be showing you how to get the best performance possible out of your Ryzen processor. A number of you have been messaging me asking how to get the best performance you can out of the Ryzen CPUs. Bear in mind, of course, that they are just recently released. Ryzen 7 is, well, pretty new, and Ryzen 5 is not too long in the future. So, naturally, we will see subsequent BIOS revisions, which not only improve the compatibility of faster memory, but also improve performance. And we're going to be discussing that in this very video and showing off a few examples. But, with that said, that isn't to say that you're totally helpless and you have to just wait around. There are a couple of steps which you can do right now, which will drastically improve the performance of your system in certain applications. So, um, we're going to be showing you just that. Now, in this particular example, we're going to be using the MSI's board, which is the X370X Power Titanium. However, these steps will undoubtedly work on other boards as well, so you don't have to fret or fuss about that. And, uh, well, yeah, let's just get started. Updating your motherboard BIOS is a must. The X370 Prime motherboard from Asus loses here to the MSI Carbon, despite the Carbon only having a 1700 versus the Prime's 1700X. The other parts in the rig are identical, including the Founders Edition GTX 1080. The only difference is being faster RAM clock on the MSI board thanks to the BIOS update, which allows us to choose 266.7 versus the Asus's 2400, and the later, later BIOS revisions improve performance. Asus have in the past few days released a BIOS improving its board performance too, which we'll test very soon. Updated BIOS revisions also add more than just performance. For example, MSI's Carbon with early revisions didn't allow SMT to be disabled, and ASUS boards are now better at reading temperatures and adjusting voltages. BIOSes will continue to improve over the upcoming months according to our discussions with board vendors. Next up is disabling HPET using a Windows command. Now, some motherboards currently do not allow you to disable them in their BIOS, so I'm just providing a blanket way to do it within Windows itself. Bear in mind, this will affect some overclocking with Ryzen Master from what I understand. However, I would prefer to have solid performance advantages. And besides, you can overclock via the BIOS anyway. So this is done via elevated command prompt. And as you can see on screen, it is BCD edit space slash delete value slash use platform clock. I'll also remember to add that into the video description. And you can simply add that, reboot the machine, and you will have disabled um, this particular feature. Next up is to choose the high performance power plan within Windows. You simply click start, type power, choose a power plan, click high performance. You can adjust the monitor time off if you so desire and that's about it. This achieves two things. The first is core parking. It disables it. This means that idle CPU cores are instantly available for thread scheduling. This essentially means that if games don't use, say, Core 5 for a few moments and then need to schedule some work on it, it's going to be available much quicker. Therefore, the game will have less latency. I'm, of course, simplifying for this video. And also fast frequency changes, which are also rather important within the Zen architecture. Next up, Ryzen is very sensitive to memory frequency. So if you are running an older RAM set... Um, which is not very fast, you may be very well served to upgrade. Do bear in mind that at the moment, BIOS revisions are still pretty early. Therefore, if you own, for example, a 3200 MHz kit, there is a chance that you might be limited to, let's say, just 2400 MHz. However, BIOS revisions are improving this, to so definitely keep an eye on your mothboard vendor's BIOS, and also, of course, try to manually change the frequencies if you can within, bio, within the BIOS itself. As you can see from just a couple of tests, there is an awful lot of difference from going just from 2133 to 2667 megahertz. Well, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. There will, of course, be a lot more content coming up on the channel over the next few days, including a full review of the um, motherboard that we're showing off in this particular video and on top of that we're of course going to have full reviews of various graphics cards which we're working on right now for computer systems and a lot more besides as well as a lot of tech tips so do stick with us if you're interested in that kind of stuff but hopefully you found this video informative and i'll see you soon with any luck take care of yourselves bye for now